Odyssey Scholarship Program. This is Axiom Mission Control Center. Please call station four voice check. One, two, voice check. Hi, Zara. Hi, John. How are you doing today? Yes. Can you hear me? Good, good. Yes, ma'am. I sure can. Loud and clear. So we have an AX2 pilot with us live from the International Space Station, Mr. John Schaffner. How's it going, John? Hey, Zara, very nice to talk to you again. I'm doing great. We're up here uh, going around the world every 92 minutes like you're supposed to, uh, just having a ball. Very nice to be on board with you guys. Can you hear me, Zara? Yes, we can hear you loud and clear. Uh, can you do a demonstration for us, John? Yeah, what would you like to see? We do lots of fun stuff up here, you know. But let's see what you've got. Can you ask us, can you uh, show a few flips for us, John? Oh, okay. You know, I'm a, I'm a new astronaut, right? So that's the first thing we like to do, but it's usually the last thing we learn really well. But let me see how I do here. First, I'll do it just by floating up and grabbing the top rail here. That way I don't look silly too early in this phone call, right? So, but things are pretty easy in space. So that's always fun. You know, I can do a flip. There's a lot of stuff around here, and if I bang on it, somebody will yell at me. So, uh, actually, well, Peg, Peggy's right over there. She keeps an eye on me. So, uh, zero G is fun. Uh, it can be challenging when you first come to orbit. You know, moving around. It takes very, very little effort to move around. You know, we can. I have a few things to show you that it can demonstrate microgravity probably better than I can. If I go like this, then it just makes it worse. So we have to learn to be steady and calm and just stand still. That's how it works best. That's awesome. And we would like to know uh, how things float in space. You mean why they float in space? Um, yeah, so they... Well, uh, yes. It's, it's interesting. Uh, a lot of people confuse zero G with microgravity or floating with weightlessness. Uh, we are, we are weightless here, but we're not in zero G, uh, here at 250 miles above earth. We're still under the influence of about 90% of earth's gravity. So people say, well, how can you float if you still have 90% of earth's gravity, you know, gripping you? So, but we're flying forward so fast, 17,500 miles an hour that we're actually traveling, traveling away from Earth or are trying to escape as fast as gravity holds us. So gravity pulls us, but we're traveling so fast that we're falling away. So we end up falling around the Earth. Here's how I can show you with this. I've got a couple of balls. If this is the Earth and this is the space station or the space station, we're falling around the Earth at 17,500 miles an hour. Gravity holds us here. So everything in this station is traveling 17,500 miles an hour, but it sure doesn't look like it. it doesn't look like a fast ping pong ball to, to me, does it you? That was such a treat. Thank you, John. 
our students are very eager to ask you some questions. Would that be okay? Yeah, you bet. Let me, uh, I think they, I think somebody sent me your questions, um, just in case I can't hear them very well. Sure, go right ahead. Does NASA take care of space junk? Well, everyone's concerned about space junk. It's kind of like the weather, but we're not doing a whole lot about it yet. We know it's there and a problem. So we try to keep our satellites and our rockets, you know, in one piece. And if something happens, we like to keep track of where they are. So for the moment, the way we take care of space junk is to keep track of it. So later, as technology develops where we can actually go collect it or do something with it, we'll know exactly where it is and go pick it up. How do you use the bathroom in space? Ah. Well, you know, it's a lot like Earth, except just a little different. Because we don't have the effect of gravity pulling things away from us, we have to have vacuum suction. We use fans to do this. So we have a special potty that uh, when we go number one, it pulls it away in through a hose and a funnel. And we go number two, well, we have to be creative. It goes in a little bag. We have to throw that away. So... Not very pretty, but if you want to be in space, you've got to put up with the messy stuff, right? Uh, did the investment of NASA increase or decrease after the moon landing? Oh, I couldn't hear that very well. Um, did the investments of NASA increase or decrease after the moon landing? Well, we're told that they decreased a little bit, uh, and that was uh, unfortunate for a little while, but NASA's back in full force now. They're working hard to take us back to the moon with the Artemis program. I'm sure you saw the first test launch, and now the first full crew of uh, Artemis has been assigned, and they're training for a flight, I believe, and uh, later next year, I, I think, is the launch date. So we're going to put people men and women back on the moon here uh, in the next year or so. It'll be very exciting. Uh, what are the chances that I can join NASA as an astronomer? Uh, very good, actually. Um, you know, there are so many careers in the STEM field, the technology, engineering, math, sciences, that you can do, if that's really what you're interested in, sounds like you are, because you said it, so that's exactly what you should do. So read everything you can about astronomy. Take some good, solid classes that take you toward uh, astronomy. Ask your teachers and your counselors, what can I do to become an astronomer and do those things? And then when you uh, are ready, uh, start applying to NASA. Look for the types of jobs that you want and just keep applying, applying, applying until you get in, and you will. So there's home for everybody in space. What is the most interesting thing you saw in space? So far, it's me upside down, because I never thought I'd be able to be upside down like this and talk to talk to you. But, um, well, right now, we, we see the Earth, and that's a pretty amazing thing. Um, when I first got here, I went to the cupola, which is our, our little set of windows that give us an amazing view, and it was, it was absolutely... <laughs> It was absolutely the greatest thing I've ever seen. Uh, a bright blue ball with brilliant clouds, and you can see the whole curve of the Earth. You know, I, I could have stayed there all day, but I had work to do. Um, so that's pretty much the most amazing thing I've seen. Um, and I'd like for you to be able to come up here and see it yourself. How did you feel when you first got in space? I felt like this. Oh, I'm in space. I'm weightless actually I felt pretty good uh, it was a long day uh, with SpaceX getting on the rocket and getting up in space um, but we got here and we all felt really good and first day in the space station we worked really hard and we had to slow down a little bit because you're supposed to take it easy your first day so um, generally it, I feel just like I'm at home except I can do funny things like this that I can't do at home 
I, I can do that probably better at home than I can do it here, actually. I'm not very good at floating around yet. Do you eat um, ice cream in a space? Ooh, astronauts love ice cream. How did you know that? Um, but we don't have it here. We have to have someone send it up special. If we're really good astronauts, NASA will send us ice cream. But we're not going to be here long enough to get any. So unfortunately, I'll have to come back and have some ice cream in space. Is it difficult to sleep in a space? Mm, I haven't had any trouble at all, uh, except the first night was a lot of fun. I'll tell you about that. Uh, I'm sleeping in the Dragon capsule, the, not the capsule, the Dragon spacecraft, um, in a sleeping bag. And I tied myself down to a spot, and I was laying there nice and flat. But when I woke up the next morning, I was over here like this, kind of like, what happened? Um, so it's easy to sleep, but... When you're asleep, you can roam around, so you have to tie yourself down really good. It was fun. I don't know where I'm going to end up tonight. Maybe over there, I think. That's a good spot. Um, do you know how... What was the hardest part of, in training um, here to get to space? Like, What is the hardest thing to train? Like. Um, well, <clears throat> it's long, you know, that's, that's the hard part. It's just long. It takes a long time. Uh, you have to study a lot, read a lot. Uh, that's not hard. It's just a lot of it. So hard is just deciding to do it. I think and making yourself stay on it, even when it gets hard and you might want to stop. So, you know, it's challenging when you're doing something that's difficult, uh, that you know very little about. So you have to trust in the trainers, but uh, when you trust in the trainers, then it becomes pretty easy. So the hard part, the hard part was uh, going to bed at night because I was too excited to think about coming here, actually, if that makes sense. When did you first go you guys to like space? It? When did I first go into space? Um, well, this is my first trip, actually, to space. And I'm not sure I want to leave. So I've been looking around for a place to hide so that when they leave, they can't find me and they'll have to come back and get me later. But I think they'll probably find me. And one final question, John. Our kids want to know how they can become like you in the future and go to space. Oh, that's an exciting question. Uh, I want them to become like they are, um, be the person that they want to be. But the best way to do that, to do both of those, is to uh, understand that whatever it is you think you are, that's what you are. If you uh, want to be an astronomer, you want to be an astronaut, you want to be a teacher, uh, then work hard to do that. That's how you become that person that you want to be. Um, so don't be what somebody else is or what somebody else wants to be, I think. Um, be the person you are. Decide for you what it is that is most important to you. And every day you do something to move you closer to that. That's how you become the person that you admire most, yourself. Thank you so much, John. Thank you. So um, when astronauts get hungry, we get, we get our snacks. We like, we like cashews. You guys like cashews? No? I'm sure somebody there likes cashews. So Zara, who's in the room? Who do we have talking today? So we have all of our students at our local school in Sunny Isles Beach, and they're all dreaming of becoming astronauts one day and you know, following the same footsteps that you're following. 
Well, I think that's awesome. And when they get up here, they'll get an amazing floating iPad like I have. So you want to see a little demonstration on uh, how big objects and little objects interact in space? You, know, you can take a big object and a little object. And, yeah, and you have energy in both. When you move them, you, you, you throw this one, and you move this one in velocity, and it develops momentum. But the big object will always win. Eventually, the ping pong ball puts a little bit of energy in the big ball where eventually it will start to move. That's momentum. Actually, it's Newton's law of motion, one of, one of them, that's called conservation momentum. So uh, energy is always there. It just transferred. So your teachers can tell you, tell you more about that. And even when you come to space, you can play ping pong with yourself in space. There you go. Ping pong in space. Now that'll make anybody want to be an astronaut, won't it? That's awesome. We all want to play some ping pong after this. So what else can I tell you about being in space? It's kind of fun up here, you know. Uh, we have another question from the students. What do you do when you get sick in space? Um, well, if you we, we, we usually have a doctor aboard, interestingly, or, or someone is trained. You know, someone is always trained as the chief medical officer. They have specific training and diagnosing. Uh, but if we get unusually sick we always call ground they have flight surgeons available 24 hours a day and we have video links we have lots of medical equipment here to take vital signs we have emergency equipment here uh, lots of we have a good pharmacy so if someone gets sick and needs some sort of medicine we have that on board usually so the the international space station is well equipped to deal with a lot of uh, a lot of common illnesses anything more severe than that then we would probably have to consider taking someone home, but we're well equipped. All right, thank you so much, John, on behalf of all the students at Sunny Isles, as well as the mayor of the city of Sunny Isles Beach, Miss Larissa Svetchen, and Commissioner Viscara. We would love to, we really thank you for your time and uh, for all of your demos with us. Yeah, you bet, Zara. It's very nice to talk to you again, and good luck to everyone in school uh, and for the summer coming up. Uh, have fun, but do plan to work hard when school gets back in and go go do your best. Thank you so and much. Have a space. wonderful time. That concludes the event. Thank you to all participants.